It's episode 21 of This Week in Track, and on today's show, the most important numbers from the busy weekend in track and field. Let's begin. Our first number, 12.84 seconds. That's what Devin Allen ran in the high hurdles at the New York City Grand Prix. The third fastest time in history beats Grant Holloway by a wide margin. What a statement run by Devin Allen. He's also still doing the football thing, right? Got drafted by the Eagles. Cathal Dennehy was on the scene. Got this quote from Devin Allen about his schedule. Says he's been training Monday through Thursday for the NFL. And then Friday to Sunday, he's doing track stuff. I think Devin Allen's cracked the code. To be better at track, do less track. Let's go to the collegiate ranks now. Abby Steiner and the number is 21.80. Smashes the collegiate record in the women's 200. She also ran 48.9 in the 4x4, so that could have been the number. She was also the only athlete to get top three in four different events, 4x1, 4x4, 100, and 200. So actually, I'm not entirely sure which number you'd focus in on for Steiner. Her meat was like a, a polynomial. You have exponents, you have parentheses, trying to explain just how awesome it was. Next number, one one hundredth of a second. No, that's not the margin of victory for Joseph Fonbelay in the 100 or the 200. That's the amount of time it took all of us after the 100 to figure out that he was definitely gonna win the 200. There's no clearer foreshadowing in track and field right now than Joseph Fonbelay winning 100 with a 200 meter race to come because you watch how well he closes in the 100 and then you think, what happens if he had 100 more meters? And I think we all at this point know exactly what happens. Past is prologue. I think that saying comes from track meets. We'll stick with the Gators at the NCAA championship. The number is 2149. That's the amount of recovery time Anna Hall had between getting second in the four meter hurdles and running the final event, the 800 of the heptathlon, which she won. 21 minutes and 49 seconds. That's not a lot of time. I mean, in essence, that 800 was like a cool down from her 400 meter hurdle race. So during her cool down, she won an NCAA title. It's very hard to get anybody to cool down after a championship meet and Hall did it while winning the heptathlon. Whew. And she completed the first ever NCAA octathlon. Back to the pro side, the number is 0.34 seconds. That was the margin of victory between Shrika Jackson and Elaine thompson hurrah in the 200 at the Rome Diamond League meet. We all know that Shrika Jackson is great, but this was still a much bigger margin than we thought was in command, coming off the curve, and just dominated from there. Credit to her, obviously metal threat, both the 100 and the 200. But for Thompson Ara, she's in that rare group of people where it just looks weird when they lose. I don't know what the name of that should be, but some people have that for two years in their career, four years in their career. Some people just last for a month or two, but it just looks strange when she's not crossing the finish line first you're looking around wondering is there another like are they going to call him back was there a false start number three as in the third fastest time of noah Lyles's career the 19.61 in new york in the 200 this was an incredible race for lyles never had any competition ripped off the bend and then had that patented noah lyles final hundred also great celebration at the end with the phone out the gap in the U.S. might have shrunk between Lyles, Knighton, and Curley there. You could even say Knighton's a favorite after the 19.49. But the gap still remains. The gap might be bigger than ever between Lyles and everybody else when it comes to the celebration. He's just in a tier on his own. And finally, we close with the number 2015. That's the last year a Kenyan man won a medal in the 5,000 at a major outdoor championship. But, but, but that could be changing. Nicholas Camelli and Jacob Kropp both ran 12.46 at the Rome Diamond League. Those are all-time marks for those two gentlemen. Could this be the year 
that the drought ends. Did anybody know that this drought existed? I think most people just always assume Kenya's been racking up the medals. 